Why would we take a new 2007 Mustang GT and remove its stock 4.6 liter engine? Because when we get through with it, it's gonna make at least 200 more horsepower. Now late model Mustang mod motors are perfect candidates for performance upgrades. And here in the horsepower shop, we made some good power with performance bolt-ons and even stroked one recently, but nothing compares to what's in store for today. First, a TBS 2300 Roush charger that uses root style technology to make 13 pounds of boost. It uses an air to water intercooler setup. It features things like these 52 pound injectors that ride on low profile rails. Now to get more air to that setup, well that starts with this giant 6 inch conical air filter, carbon fiber inlet tube, and it all leads to these dual 60 millimeter throttle bodies. The kit also comes with things like a specially tuned dampener, upgraded tensioner, and heavy duty belt. Cool kit that ought to make a lot of power, but uh, why did we remove the whole engine to install it? Good question. And the answer is, we want the most solid foundation possible for all that extra power. Plus, we wanted to try out Roush's new short block, which is an aluminum block with a forged crankshaft, H-beam rods, and 16cc dish pistons. Now, that'll take our compression ratio from 9.8 to 8.5 to 1. It's got upgraded rod and main bearings, and the best part may be the three-year warranty that Roush gives you if you run this short block with their supercharger kit. We can get started by removing the oil pan, everything up front, including the pulleys, balancer, water pump, this crossover housing, the valve covers, and finally the timing cover. Next, the timing chains can go. Then, on each side, the cylinder head, cam, and exhaust manifold come off as one piece. Now we can remove the oil pump and pickup together, followed by the oil filter bracket and motor mounts. The short block comes with a new windage tray that has been modified to clearance for the rod bolts. It's got eight little windows. Sure does, and once he gets that thing bolted up, we can start installing the parts we took off the old block onto the new one with the exception of the harmonic balancer. Now, Roush also includes this rebuild kit that includes new gaskets and seals just to make sure we don't have any leaks once that thing's buttoned up. With everything bolted back up, we can install the lower intake manifold with the built-in intercooler and temp sensor. Next to go on is the supercharger. Now while it may look like a lot of other ones you've seen on the outside, this Roush charger uses the latest and most efficient roots technology available. In fact, here's an animated look at how it all works. It uses Eaton's new Twin Vortices series technology, a patented design that features a high twist, four lobe rotor, and high flow inlet, greatly enhancing thermal efficiency, higher volume capacity, and higher operational speeds. Next, with the TVS blower bolted down, we can lube up the O-rings on these 52-pound injectors and install them. Along with the new fuel rails. And with that handled, we can install the alternator bracket. Now the wiring harness can go back on the motor. After grinding down the ears for clearance, we can install a stock alternator. Now with that spacer bolted up, we can install this new dual throttle body. And we can get to work under the car while we've got it in the air. Now when we come back, we're going to finish up this installation and hopefully have some fun with a 500 horsepower Mustang. Stay with us. Horsepower's back with the Roush Charger installation on this 08 Mustang. Now time for the nose to go, along with the impact energy absorber and this bracket. That way we can install the intercooler's double core low temp radiator. Next, with the inner fender removed, we drill a couple of holes 
for a bracket to mount the electric water pump that pumps five gallons a minute. Then we can connect our hose from the radiator to the pump. This other hose from the radiator will connect to the charge intercooler under the blower once it's back in the motor, completing the closed loop. Now, this degas bottle does, well, just what the name implies. It traps any air that might be in the closed loop system. And to do that, it's got to be at the highest point, which is going to be right here on top of the radiator shroud. In a little bit, hold it up a little bit. That's got it. With our engine back on a K member, it's almost ready to go back in the car. But first, we've got to upgrade our clutch system. That consists of an aluminum flywheel, a pressure plate shim to increase clamping load, and a disc with ceram metallic pucks. Now, this system will retain factory pedal pressure, and so drivability will be the same. The aluminum flywheel installs with this bolt load plate. And now the clutch assembly. Of course, the supplied installation tool keeps everything lined up while we bolt it in place. Okay, to push more petrol through those larger injectors we installed, we'll have to swap the stock intake fuel pump for this dual fuel pump that's like the one that comes in the GT500. Oh, and to make it work properly, we'll also install this driver module. Now, it may sound like a lot of work, but believe it or not, we don't even have to go under the car. We just remove the back seat to access the fuel tank. We remove the stock pump and drop in the new one from Roush. We'll install the module here in the trunk, connect the harness, and that part is handled. Roush now has its own blend of synthetic oil, especially designed for this application. Well, that's it for the installation. Now we're gonna fire it up and check for any leaks. Take it out on the street and put some miles on this short block. Then we'll bring it back in the shop and put it on the dyno jet and see how much power that Roush charger will give us. Go ahead and fire it up. Man, I can't take any more of that music. Plus, it's my turn to drive. Man, this Roush is awesome. The acceleration will really surprise you. I actually think from seat of the pants driving, this thing could run with a Z06. Let's get it on the dyno and see what kind of numbers it can put to the pavement. Considering the usual power losses from an engine dyno to a chassis dyno, we should make about 420 horsepower to increase success. Oh, but guess what? It didn't make that. It made 449.8 horsepower, a lot better than we expected. Now, last time we had a stock GT on our chassis dyno, it only got about 267. All right, that's a done deal. Enough modern day muscle. When we come back, we're heading to the heyday of horsepower. Stick around. Talk about your true blast from the past. The NHRA Hot Rod Reunion has come back to Bowling Green, Kentucky, and the fans are loving it. 
Nearly 1,500 pre-72s competed in the car show. Street rides, customs, classics, muscle cars, and of course, rat rides. In fact, the old horsepower raunchy rat was a perfect way for Mike and I to tour the ground. It's amazing how much fun and imagination some folks put into their show entries. One hot rider had visitors dumbfounded trying to identify his mysterious motor. Mostly they all got this the same look on their face and they kind of walked up and scratched their head, look at it, and they just give up and ask me. <laughs> well, I'm scratching my head and looking at it too. what is it? It's a Jaguar. Oh. <laughs> Here in the Vintage Car Corral, we were immersed in amazing hot rod history. With everything from a Sox and Martin Hemi Cuda to the ZZ Top 33 Eliminator. From Jack Crispin's Mercury Cyclone to this, a replica of the 74 Mustang Cheryl Greer drove to the first ever Funny Car Championship. Even after he caught it and himself on fire during a qualifying run at a must-win NHRA race. I had to go to the hospital. And they fixed the car overnight, and they called me and said, if you can get out of the hospital, we've got the car ready. I said, well, I'll get out. And the doctor, uh, my doctor said, no, you can't leave. I said, watch me. The next day, they had the car ready. We fired it up, and they wanted me to do a half-track burnout to make sure I could still drive it, you know. Did that, backed up, got a standing ovation from the crowd. I love that. We won the next round. And that got us into the world championship. Well, these guys, the Ram Chargers of Detroit, made their mark in history much earlier, in the 50s. While working as engineers in Motor City, they used spare parts and a lot of ingenuity to turn a 49 Plymouth into a winning race car that, in many ways, was ahead of its time. The whole idea of the car was to get maximum performance. And because of the poor uh, tires and traction that they had at that time, the best thing you could do is to try to get all of the weight on the rear end when you took off. And uh, so the only way to do that was to raise the center of gravity of the vehicle, and that's why the engine is up as high as it is. The rear wheels are as far forward as they can go without touching the door. The front wheels are as far forward as they can go without getting into the bumper. Is that the same as the altered wheelbase cars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the high and mighty Plymouth lost a water plug on this burnout, but we did get to see a run by the world's fastest wheel standing backhoe. Oh man, so much cool stuff. Now, it wouldn't be a real reunion event without nostalgic drag racing. Now, since I'm a little bit rusty on those old classes, I'm gonna get a little advice from an expert. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back into action here at Beach Bend Raceway Park for the sixth annual NHRA Holly Hot Rod Reunion. My expert turned out to be Derek Beach, a professional track announcer at the ripe old age of 14. He got his start announcing junior dragster events back home in Ohio and never learned the meaning of stage fright. You can be two different types of announcer. You can walk out there on the starting line and, and do something right in front of the crowd or you got this glass wall behind you. And it doesn't bother me either way. I could walk out there right now and, and you just, you can't be really scared of what you do or you're not gonna really go anywhere with it. Here's David White, Washington, Indiana. That's the 67 Chevy 2 Nova 496. Well, there's proof that passion for hot rods has no age limit. Fans of all ages were thrilled to see the front engine dragsters roar down the strip to see the fuel altereds and other vintage racers compete on the quarter mile just like in the so-called heyday. Well, as the Kentucky sun started to settle and the anticipation was building for the Hot Rod Reunion's sizzling Saturday night tradition. All right, we're getting ready for the grand finale here at the Hot Rod Reunion. Now this is gonna be over 50,000 horsepower of all the top fuel cars from the 60s and 70s. Now it's called the Cackle Fest and if you've never experienced it, get ready for one heck of a show. With hot rod heroes like Don Garlitz and his classic dragster lining up to burn 10 gallons of nitromethane in five minutes.
Okay, this is the part of the show where we usually tell you about something hot and new from the aftermarket, but this time we're not just talking, we're also testing. We've read a lot recently about some new technology called Pulse Power. The result here on the left is a product called the Pulse Star Pulse Plug. Now, they look like most plugs on the outside, but they come with an internal electrical device called a capacitor. As you can see in this high-speed video, it boosts energy to the spark, making it more powerful. According to independent tests, the result is improved performance and fuel economy. Now, could change into a set of these also translate to more horsepower at the rear wheels? Well, let's find out. By the way, this is a 2001 C5 Corvette. The engine is a stock LS1, and the spark plugs are an OEM replacement. And after the warm-up, we'll make three baseline pulls. Then we'll add up the horsepower and torque numbers, divide them by three, and our average is 285.5 horsepower, 299.7 foot-pounds of torque. After letting the engine cool down, we can swap out the baseline plugs for the pull stars and reset the computer. Next, after heating up the engine to the same temperature as before, we make three more runs. Then we do the math again, and this time our average horsepower is 289.2, torque is 306.7 foot-pounds, a gain of almost four horsepower, seven foot-pounds of torque. I tell you what, let's use the big screen here to compare a baseline run, which is in black, against a pulse star run in red. That's torque, this is horsepower. Now they're pretty much neck and neck up to about 4,200 RPM. Then the pulse star jumps ahead by as much as, well, nine horsepower at 5,100 RPM and stays ahead all the way through to the end of the run. Pretty interesting. Of course, you might get more, you might get less. I should point out that other tests with Pulse Stars showed a fuel economy increase of about 6%. Now, if you want to find out more about Interpulse plugs, just visit our website. Now, next week, we're going to start a brand new project that'll save you money at the pump without sacrificing any horsepower. Yeah, it's our lean green street machine, and you don't want to miss it. We'll see you then. Come on, let's go hey, lead watch the way. Out, punk. <laughs>